Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent the HD show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. The Tanet Coup expansion is in full swing, and uh, one of their new Skellige cards, I mean, you can see it already on screen, is probably one of my favorite cards in the game as of yet. She focuses on self damage, on self wounding, and then healing that off, uh, generating um, rain, and then also just looking amazing. That card art is one of the nicest cards I have seen in this game. And that is saying something because the art of Gwent is uh, of a very high quality overall. So uh, today we're going to be heading into Skellige, of course, and we're going to be looking at the Salty Sacrifice deck. So the Salty Sacrifice deck is a combination deck of some self-wounding units combined with Druids, the Druid archetype. So we're going to be seeing the Scenario card, we're seeing the new Melusine card, and of course a lot of the new Cultist cards as well. We're going to go through each and every single one of these cards one by one, uh, but if you know what all these cards do, as usual, you can skip through the example matches using the timeline down below. And in the description, you can also find the link to the Play Gwent website, where you can just import this deck in one go. Clear enough? Let's head into each and every single one of these cards. So the first one, the Armored Drakkar, is one of my all-time low provision favorites. So four power, two armor for four provisions. And at the end of your turn, if Armored Drakkar has no armor, you gain two armor. And whenever it loses its armor, so on exposed, you boost yourself by one. But if there's two damage units on the other side of the field, you boost yourself by two instead. So basically a card that is very hard to kill and even benefits from getting damaged just a little bit. So uh, every single car time this card loses its armor, it will gain a point. If you lose the armor, the armor comes back. So this is basically a cycle. And one card that gels really well with this is the Hermit, the new Hermit card from the latest expansion. 7 power for 4 provisions, but on deploy damage yourself by 4, so only 3 power left. As long as you're damaged, so Berserk 6, at the end of your turn, damage the unit to the right by 1, and then heal yourself by 2. It is healing, so that means that this card cannot go over 7 points on its own accord, but as long as it's damaged, it will start damaging the card on the right as well. So if you can manage to pull this into some sort of loop with the Armored Drakkar, for example, this card does generate a lot of points. Then we have one Bear Witcher, that basically the same principle, but on the point damages itself by 4, and at the end of your turn you heal yourself by 1 regardless, so you don't damage a card to the right by one. If it, this card is no longer damaged, you gain one armor instead. So this card will gain more and more power as long as it's on the board, and that just uh, defends your rows, uh, your points eventually, because because of all the armor. Then we have our first alchemy card. We are using a lot of them um, because we're going with the druid archetype, of course. The Tears of Siren. You spawn rain on an enemy row for two turns, so that's four points of damage in one go, and then spawn a deafening siren on the opposite row, so another two points, so possibly up to six points of uh, value with one extra point if you have a damaged unit on the board because we have the battle trans ability as well. Then we have Murdrome. Murdrome is another alchemy card where you damage a unit by three and then boost it by nine. So this could give you nine points if those three points of damage is something that you don't really care about. Like for example, on the armored drag card is a great target and there's a few other cards that really benefit from getting hit by something. Then this Fallblood Priest, basically the better version of the Hermit. So starts at three power, but on every allied turn on turn end you damage the allied root unit to the right by one and then boost self by two so this card does not have a cap this card will keep going every single turn damage the unit to the right and then boost yourself by two there's no limit to it and it will also just keep doing it while the hermit as if he's no longer damaged he will not no longer damage the unit to the right either then the new five provision card for skellige the half through singer is a cultist and a druid for five uh, five provisions, yes, four power, and on deploy you heal an allied unit by two, so there's plenty of damage units on our side of the board, so that shouldn't be a problem. And the first time you heal an allied unit on uh, your turn, you spawn a deafening siren on this row. This also happens on the heal that she herself does, so this always plays uh, for eight points if you manage to heal those two points fully, otherwise it's going to be seven. Um, and if you can't heal anything, yeah, then you break this card. But still, it's an engine that could give you value later on. And it also triggers on your leader ability, so that is uh, really, really handy indeed. And then Freya's Blessing got a provision buff, so from 6 to 5 provisions, and is still play a bronze Skellige unit from your graveyard and give it Doom. So we can get those Cultists back, we can get our Priests back, we can get whatever bronze card we want to get back, back on the field. And it's an Alchemy card, so another 
time that we get a little bit of healing on our cards. Then this one might be a bit weird, but I've included Scepter of Storm, so you deploy uh, this card on the field. It sticks on the field because it's an artifact, and you spawn and play Biting Frost, Impenetrable Fog, or Torrential Rain. Nine times out of ten, we're going to go for the Rain, because this card, about this deck, is really focused on benefiting from Rain in total. And we also have Delirium, another alchemy card where we split six damage randomly between all units on a row. So if there's only one unit there, all the damage will go on that same unit. Um, but otherwise, you can try and kill something behind the defender if it's almost dead. So uh, definitely fitting the way that we deal damage in this deck. So we're going to deal a lot of damage, but it's going to be just spread out because of the rain, because it's cards like these. Then we have the reason why we actually included Scepter of Storms, Vedermaker has been uh, changed to a druid as well, so he counts as a druid, 6 power for 6 provisions, and on deploy you increase all row effect durations by 1, if you put them on the melee row, if you put them on the ranged row, you decrease all row effects by 1. If you control Scepter of Storms, which is why that card is in our deck, you increase or decrease the durations by 3 instead, so that combo could potentially be huge, because it just means that you can get rain on your opponent's side of the board for the rest of the match. Then Grammist, of course. Grammist is also a druid, 6 power for 7 provisions. On the order, when he's on the range row, you can purify a unit. Uh, he also has seals, so you can purify something immediately. And you refresh this ability whenever you play an alchemy card. We have plenty of those, so uh, this card could potentially purify multiple times. So definitely going to be a target for uh, locks from your opponent, because otherwise all the other locks will be useless. And then the new alchemy card. This is a very, very good card. So offering to the sea. Damage all units on the battlefield by one, then spawn a Deafening Siren on a random allied row and boost it by the number of allied targets that were hit by this card. So basically negating the damage that you did yourself. But remember, there's a lot of cards in this deck that benefit from getting damaged. So you're getting even more points on top of that. So you damage all of your opponent's units, then um, hit your own with some of them benefiting and gain all those points back plus two, because the Deafening Siren starts at two, and then boost itself by the amount of targets that were hit on your side. So potentially very, very strong. And there is a way to play this card twice. So uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But first we have Champion's Charge, the only raid card in this deck. Uh, seven provisions, but you damage unit by five. And if there are three damaged units on your opponent's side of the field, you destroy a unit instead. So basically a very cheap Korati Heatwave that can't target artifacts, but still can target just very hugely powered units in one go. Definitely going to be useful in certain matchups to destroy those very, very tall units. Then we have the Bride of the Sea, which is the same woman that is sacrificed on the uh, offering to the sea card. So if you check that out. So that's her again. The cultist is here in the back as well. Um, but she is going to get sacrificed. But before, before that happens, she has a very, very good uh, ability as well. So four power for eight provisions on deploy. Play an alchemy card from your graveyard with provision. Uh, with a provision cost of 4 or less, and you increase the cost by the total duration of rain and storm on your opponent's side. This card could of course be bricked if you didn't manage to get an alchemy card in the graveyard before this, but um, if you manage to have a lot of rain on the board, you could double play uh, the Offering to the Sea as we just saw, and also the Sigdrifa's Rite, allowing you to uh, resurrect a unit again from the graveyard, which could potentially come in handy here as well. Um, but this card cannot be bricked actually in this deck, because with Battle Trance you can always play Murderome, and Murderome is for provisions. So you always have another Murderome you can pull from the graveyard if you really, really need to. Then, as I said, Sigdrifa's right is here as well, another alchemy card where you summon a Skellige unit from your graveyard into an allied row. There are two targets for this in this deck, uh, and we'll see those soon enough, because of course one of them is Melusine, and the other one we'll see soon enough. This is actually also a target, so uh, if you want to have another defender, you can do so as well. Covenant of Steel, 7 power, 2 armor, 9 provisions, with the defender status who protects an entire row. And on Berserk 6, so if he's damaged, he gains an extra armor point at the end of his turn. Well, their turn basically, because there's of course two people here that really, really love each other. Look at them looking at each other. It's so nice. But then, we have the Crow Mother, of course, another Druid that benefits immensely from playing alchemy cards of 4 power. On deploy, spawns true, uh, two crows in the same row. And whenever you play an alchemy card, you can summon, well, not can, you summon her automatically from your graveyard to a random allied row. So you can play her in round 1, resurrect her in round 2, and then resurrect her again in round 3. She doesn't gain doomed. Um, and, of course, 8 points on deploy. 
which is always very nice. She's also a druid, so works very well with Get and Eat as well with the scenario card. Now we have another um, very good target for our Sigdrifa's right card, so Resurrection, the Draco Turtle. Five power and five armor, and whenever this unit loses armor, so gets damage basically on the armor, you boost it by the amount of armor he lost. On uh, Barricade, so as long as he still has armor at the end of your turn, you gain another point of armor. So this could be a huge amount of points and is also a very good target for Murderum because Murderum basically plays for 12 points on this card because the 3 damage also translates into points on Draco Turtle and then you gain another point for healing if you have a damage unit on the board. So uh, this is a very good card and can of course be res resurrected with Sigdrifa's right. And uh, there's actually two cards that work very well in a passive way, because of course Mellow Scene, we needed to talk about this card. Um, so a beast with 7 power for 10 provision starts with Veil, so can be targeted by status effects. And on order, you spawn rain on an enemy row for 2 turns and damage yourself by 2. So basically only giving you 2 points, but at the end of your turn you damage adjacent units by 1, and then gain 1 base power for every unit you damaged. If any unit damage was a cultist, you refresh the order ability. So very, very complicated ability. But basically, you put this card in between two other cards. At the end of every turn, she will damage both of those cards, or either only one of them, depending on which is still alive. Um, every unit she damages gives her an extra base power. Base power meaning that if she dies or gets to the graveyard at the end of the round, she remains at that power. So you can resurrect it with Sigdrifa's right and can be at 16 power or way higher than that. If you damage with that ability, a cultist, you refresh your order ability. The order ability just allows you to spawn uh, rain on a row for two turns and damage yourself by two, uh, which also, of course, enables her to be healed again, which is, uh, yeah, this card is just great. Um, definitely gonna try to play this in the first round. The only way that this can technically be countered is with Coralty Heatwave, so completely banished. Otherwise, if it's sent to the graveyard, we can get it back. So definitely not a problem at all. Um, and there's only one card that your opponent can Coralty Heatwave, of course, unless with a few other... I mean, with Francesca Finderbear, they could technically double up on the Coralty Heatwaves, but by then I think it's too late. Um, so either Draco Turtle or Melusine will still survive. Then, of course, I talked about it before, Gedanit, the scenario card for Skellige, basically allowing you to boost, well, everything that is related to Druids and Alchemy cards. So the scenario progresses whenever you play a Druid. Starts with a Crow Clan Preacher on this row, so uh, this one where you boost yourself by one whenever you play an Alchemy card. Then chapter one is play a Crow's Eye Resume, so three Crows if you have a Druid, and of course it's an Alchemy card, so that gives you more... Um, points as well. And then Murder Room, again, damage unit by 3 and boost it by 9. Very, very powerful card, just in total. And then of course, for consistency's sake, we have Oneromancy, which is an echo card that allows us to play any card from our deck. And at the end of the round, we're going to get this back, so we can use this twice. As usual, I went with the Crystal Skull to give another unit a Veil, uh, just to get those early Bronze Cycles going with the Priest and uh, maybe the Drakkar. And then, of course, the leader ability is Battle Trance, which gives you a Murder Room card for free. Well, not for free. It's uh, the leader ability, of course. And whenever you play an alchemy card, you heal a random allied unit by one. So you get benefit from every single alchemy card you play. And Murder Room, remember, can be up to 13 points as well. So, uh, yeah, that is the Salty Sacrifice deck. Let's uh, show this off in a few example matches. And the first match of the day is against Monsters. Monsters is, of course, always a tough matchup these days, but I have a few cards that can actually deal with that. If I get, yep, okay, this is the card that I was looking for, Offering to the Sea, and actually Delirium as well could be really, really handy. We have two Cultists uh, and a Priest, so we don't have a card that actually benefits from getting damage, so I'm gonna try and get that out first. Let's get rid of one of the Hermits, uh, the, Herm the Hermits. Nice job there. Um, we could use Grammys to purify the Thunder, although it's not necessary right now. So let's get rid of Grammys. We get Oneromancy, really, really good. And I guess I can get rid of the Murdroom as well here. And we get Bright of the Sea. Okay, that's actually a really good hand already. Um, now, important with this deck is sequencing. You start out with a unit that actually benefits from getting damage. So the uh, Armored Dracar in this case. 
Um, I could actually just protect it with the Crystal Skull already. Uh, although I'm not going to. Monsters can definitely still have a predatory dive, so I'm just going to keep it like that. If they want to waste the Parasites on that, it's um, just A-OK, -okay, I think. We get the Wild Hunt Riders from our opponent, just uh, playing out those Dominance cards. So, we get a unit that benefits from getting damage. Next up, we're gonna just play the Hermit. The Hermit will damage himself by four, but of course will damage the uh, Drakkar every single turn as well. So, there we go. One hit on that, and that is absolutely perfect. So, we're getting the start of our cycle. Next up, we're gonna actually be using the uh, card where it's all about. So, we're gonna be playing Malicine. And Malicine has been perfectly set up here. So, it's two units the benefit from getting damaged because the hermit can heal himself the armor truck card gets extra points um but then so we can play on aeromancy here and get melusine where is she there she is right in between those two um so the dracker will get damaged he will gain an extra point the hermit will get damaged but also heals himself so every, every turn he will be damaged again so he will heal himself next turn um, I don't really need to veil anything at the moment because this cycle is actually perfect now. Yeah. And there we go. You can see what's going on right now. Those units start to get damaged. The only risk that we're facing right now is that we're Karate Heat Waved. Which is definitely an option. But it doesn't seem to be the case right now. And they eat the uh, Kikimura Warrior with the uh, the worker with the uh, brewers okay now um i think we can lay off the hafru singer just a little bit um although it's probably the best card to play right now yeah uh so let's use the hafru singer to heal up melusi so that's only seven points but i'm now going to use uh, the crystal skull i could have used the um the order ability first i forgot about that should have done that first because of course we get two damage right over there so uh there we go two turns of rain on the opposing side and we still get two points of base power on top of everything else we want to get this going as long as possible the longer Melusine is on the board, the stronger she will be in the next turn, and the stronger she will be in the turn afterwards. Then we get Weavis, which is gonna boost. Okay, that is absolutely fine. Um, I think I, they're trying to build up the Crones, right? I still have the benefit because of all the engines that I'm generating, so let's do Crow Mother over here, because the Hafru Singer is gonna try and fill that row as much as possible. We're gonna be playing Melusine again on that same row. Because uh, we're going to get one point back anyway. So, there we go. And Melusine goes to seven points now. The half Singer also generates a Siren every single turn. So, that's a very, very... So, basically, we have like four engine cards on the board right now. And then we get Gant Kian. That is also fine. I'm guessing our opponent is trying to get the... Um, is going to play She Who Knows on the row rather soon. But I don't really care about that just yet. Let's put the priest in between here. I don't really need to reapply the rain right now. It's just a waste of points. And we get a few damaged units on the other side of the board as well. So the uh, the armor tracker will gain two points every single turn right now. Well, every two turns. And there we go. We get the pause. And no, she who knows. That is also interesting. Which means that I'm probably going to try and push this. So there we go, we get another hit on Melusine, and if you can see this, Melusine is at 17 base power right now. Which is huge, because we're going to be able to play her again, of course. Now we still have an Aeromancy. Oh, we get the Covenant of Steel as well, so that means that we are protected against... Huh. We are protected against um, Karate Heatwave directly there. The Hafu Singer would be nice, but it's not required gonna get rid of her we get another armored dracar yeah let's finish this like that um i don't have the draco turtle but i can definitely get it out of the deck if i want to it's basically i could also go with get and but i'll leave that for later let's start with the covenant of steel uh covenant of steel in the back there we go so if our opponent does not have a purify we don't oh this is really good so yeah, that's actually something I really wanted to see. This is because the self-eater will spread out really far. 
And we have Offering to the Sea, so we can damage every single thing here. But let's start with Sigrifa's right. Sigrifa's right into Malacene. So Malacene gives us those 17 points. If we're lucky, ah, the Crow Mother doesn't go over there. That is too bad. So we only get one tick on Malacene now. But next turn, of course, we'll be putting the Armor Drakkar on that row as well. And then we get the Rat Catcher Rats, which is going to be a lot of points. Uh, we could technically try and damage that. Uh, but it's not really that much of a problem right now. So let's just slowly try and get as many points as possible here. I didn't use the other ability. Hmm, kind of forgot about that. Could have placed the, uh, the rain on the board. But it wouldn't have been refreshed anyway, so it doesn't really matter, I think. Now the question is, which card do I play with on Aeromancy? I think I could go for the Draco Turtle. Just to maximize the points. So the Self Eater is going to keep copying itself. That is a Witch Apprentice that is at Sabbath already. That is very nicely done from our opponent. Um, but I'm going to start bringing the rain in. Um, I think I'm not going to have enough rain to do something fancy here. Uh, I only have one more cultist. I mean, I have the hermit here. So we got that as well. And then that. Okay, that is fine. So they use the leader ability. Let's see. So let's put rain on the other side of the board. Then use Oneromancy. I mean, we don't have a, a cultist because uh, th these guys aren't cultists. Um, so the order ability will not be reset. I could reset it with Bride of the Sea. Or I now play a Hermit. No, Draco Turtle is going to be more points. Yeah, so let's put Draco Turtle right over here. And that is that. It's a very nice cycle here. That's going to automatically keep going while the Witch Apprentice is only two points every turn. But of course the Relics will keep going up. And then here we get Wispets on the Defender. Interesting. Because um, I can now use Delirium. And I might actually kill one of the Self Eaters here, if I'm lucky. Doesn't seem like I am. Nope, not lucky. But we did get a heal on Melusine there. And other than that, I really don't need to worry all that much. I could have used... Offering of the Sea as well, but Offering of the Sea, Offering to the Sea would have killed my own Defender. Ooh, banish a unit from my graveyard. And they don't have Gurney Koya on the field, so it is a 7-pointer, so that was the Hermit that they killed. Offering of the Sea is probably the best card to play here. Yeah, so let's do that. That kills two of the Self Eaters. There we go. And gives us a lot of points. We get a lock on the defender, so they couldn't take out the defender, which is really good, by the way. I think I'm just going to play this out. Um, because I can do Murtrome on the Draco Turtle, which is going to be just enough. So Murtrome on the Draco Turtle. And there we go. And now we can play Bride of the Sea wherever the hell we want. And play another Murdrome from the deck. And put that on the Armored Drakkar, which will also go up to a huge amount of points. And there we go, 81-49. Our opponent still has two cards. If one of them is Erden, I'm going to be pissed, but it is what it is. There we go, Erden. And that's not enough. And we're still getting extra points. And they also reset. Um, yeah, there we go. They also reset the defender to uh, six to gain another six points, so that was really good. And Malacene was going to keep going anyway, so that was really, really good. Next up, Ursine Ritual. So this could probably be a mirror match, which is actually not that bad. I usually can manage against mirror matches. Let's get rid of the Murdroom. Promod is always good. We get the Armored Drakkar. Yeah, we basically got a... Perfect hand, this is really good. So let's finish redrawing here. They also got on Aeromancy, so we can have actually grab whatever card we want. And they start doing the discard package. But the discard package is only useless, useful, of course, if they're uh, doing something with it. But um, we're not, they're not dealing damages yet, so they discarded the cards. 
That isn't really gonna hurt us. And now we got Sarah, so this probably means that we're facing Lippy. Lippy means Coralty. That is not as pleasant as I thought it was gonna be. So let's play... I would usually go for Hermit, because Hermit is a cultist. I can put Melusine in between there, but I want to avoid playing Melusine too early now. Because I'm going to get Coralty otherwise. Now there is a way to make this cycle work without Melusine. Because I could put the Svalblood Priest right next to the Hermit. Um, damaging the Hermit, so he's always damaged to also do his ability. And now we got two more discards probably. So this card over there, and then the, um, the stratagem they're not using apparently. Okay. Um, so next up's Fallblood Priest. I'm gonna put that over here. Still generating quite a lot of points. Every single turn. So that's gonna be one, two. Yeah. So three points every turn, and then four points every two turns. Uh, so Chrome Mother over here. And then I'm going to try and see if I can just put um, the Aqua Turtle down. And as you can see, so the Priest always damages the Hermit and then the Hermit can heal itself. Okay, I'm going to keep offering to the sea for the, the final round, because um, that's going to just work a lot better. I'm feeling like a Karate might be inbound. Um, if I use Melusine now, he's going to get karate and I'd rather have the Draco Turtle Karate than Melusine. So let's do this. And hope that we get Karate on the Draco Turtle. Because that would allow me to then just use Melusine next. And our opponent drew a card, and then this card's another one. So most likely that's going to be Morgvark that's being discarded. Nope, it's not. And they also don't get any crows because their row was filled. And we now destroy the highest unit, which is just that. Ooh. There's nothing to heal at the moment, so I'm just going to put Melusine on the board. If it dies, it dies. I mean, if it gets karate, it gets karate. I don't really mind. It's going to be one of the two. And we get a pass now. Okay. Uh, which means that I can actually use uh, Oneiromancy now. To probably get rid of something that I'm not too annoyed by to lose. So I could just use it to get rid of that Bear Witcher Adept. It's going to be four points. Um, and then this on their side of the board. Uh, are we going to get four points? So one... That's not going to do anything. Is that enough? Wait, I got a point here, I got two points here, and another one here. Uh, I think I might have miscalculated here. This is not going to be good, is it? Um, so this ends up at six. This gets damaged. And then boosted by two, so only one point. And this is also one point. So that's only three points. I'm not gonna... It's not enough. Crap, okay. Yeah, that's annoying. Um... I misplayed there. Would have been, wouldn't have been enough. Um, I would have lacked one point. So yeah, the Oneiromancy was a bit of a waste. But at least Medicine got a, a bit further along. So we get Scepter of Storms, which is probably not going to be useful in this case. I'm going to get rid of that. We got Federmaker, of course. Now we get Federmaker. Um, probably just going to pass anyway. So let's get rid of Armored Drakkar. We get get and eat. Okay. Good, good. The hand is good, but yeah, I'm going to be down a card. Our opponent is really benefiting from the fact that they're playing um, not Gurney, um, what's his name, Lippy. So I'm just gonna pass. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll see how that will end. We're going into a long round, so they're probably gonna be over swarming, which gives me the benefit for offering to the sea. And then that on Hermes is gonna probably just be another discard, right? Why are they gonna play Lippy now already? They could. And they will. I think that's early, because you lose all the points that you're getting from yeah, Roach and then uh, Nickers, yeah. Okay. But better for me then, I suppose. Round two, yeah, I totally misplayed. I should have picked any other card with uh, an Ironman, would have been better. Probably uh, one of those half roof singers would have been uh, the best. Um, just to get a little bit more points out of that. Um, the Hermits, I'll keep 
the merge room. Uh, I also need to keep two druids for Gadany. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the armor tracker anyway, um, and I'll just get rid of the murder room because I'm gonna get two murder rooms from the elite ability. Okay. Ooh, they don't have Saris. It's a weird play to start out with. The card that I'm gonna get from the deck is gonna be the Defender. So I'm gonna play that first. So Covenant of Steel. It's very first card. There we go. Put that in the back. And then we're gonna replay Malacene, which should be at yeah, 15. 15 is good. We're gonna get damaged by the discards from Coral. But that is not a problem because that means that we're gonna start getting some um, some extra boosts there. Um, I'm not ideal with my hermit positioning then, but it's it is what it is. So let's summon Melusine behind the defender, and I'm hoping this time I get the Chrome Mother to the right of her. Yeah, we do. So the Chrome Mother is good that she gets damage because she gets resurrected every time we use an alchemy card. So don't really matter, care about that. Now we could still get hit with the uh, what's this? What's its name? Um, yeah, what is it? I kind of forgot about the name. Um, the, uh, the destruction card, the, or is it still in the graveyard? No, it isn't. So the highest card, the skull of corruption. That thing. That thing. Okay. Um, let's use the leader ability, and then use the hermit over here. Which will now damage the Chrome Mother, and the Chrome Mother will be dead for the next turn. I also have Vader Maker, which will only increase the um, the weather by one. Um, if I put Gadanit on the same row, yeah, okay, that's that's not a problem at all. So there we go. We get damaged on the Covenant of Steel again. But again, that card will just gain more and more armor. Uh, so let's put Gedany down. So that's another Druid and another good target for the Hermit to start damaging. I'm gonna use more rain and I'm gonna put it on the back row this time. The more rain that I can put on this, the better. And there we go. So our cycle is really going. There's Skull of Corruption. We only have one turn of rain, so we can't resurrect. Can't resurrect her again. Yeah, next up should be Vader Maker. Um, although I could go with uh, Offering to the Sea already. What five provision cards do we still have left in Alchemy Wise? Freya's Blessing. Um, yeah, we don't have the means to increase the, the rain further so that Bride of the Sea could resurrect again. So I'm just gonna put uh, Vader Maker over here and then put the Alchemy card doesn't really matter i guess i'll put that behind the defender there we go and chrome mother is back as well so that is still pretty much on track now we get Heron kadu getting a bear witcher on the board I'm gonna try and damage the defender again um but i should probably play bride of the sea now what am i getting with bride of the sea so we can resurrect can resurrect the hermit because the tracker isn't going to do anything and the hermit could technically go onto the defender so let's put bride on the sea down she's another druid as well so we can get freya's blessing out we get a merge room uh merge room is basically worthless at the moment it's just going to be six points um so let's put that on the chrome mother and then we can resurrect the hmm i could actually go with the bear witcher adept so yeah let's put the bear witcher adept over here there we go because i want to generate generate a bit more armor um for the other cars that we're going to be getting we get another mega scope uh, i'm gonna put the delirium cards at the front row there hopefully not killing anything doesn't seem like it. Yeah, that's really good. We get two more points because of the healing. And then we're going to have to see what the final play of our opponents will be because we're still generating points passively. And that offering to the sea will be huge. And we get another bear witcher probably getting the heals off as well. Yeah, that's really good for them. That still gives them equal points. 
And they get another Bear School Witcher there, which is another target for Offering to the Sea. Because, uh, yeah, this card is really cool. If you see that in action, this is what happens. So we get a lot of points. Uh, we also still have Battle Trans over here, so that's going to be 7 points on the Covenant of Steel and another heal somewhere else. So there we go, we get one more point on uh, the Hermit there. So that's 21 points ahead. Our opponent still needs to do 3 damage to themselves and then they get 6 points. So that's only 3 points on the leader ability. And they need to damage themselves. I'm trying to spread that out a little bit, but it doesn't really matter, I think. They're going to be down for the count, I think. That is 18 points they have to make and it's Erden. It's Erden is not enough. Oh, it is enough on their own row. Oh, crap. That was... Okay, that was... Really nicely calculated. Very nicely done. Erden is such a troll in this uh, in this season. Erden is basically in every deck. That was annoying. Damn it. Okay, we're facing another Force of Nature deck. Which uh, we hope we're going to be steamrolling as we did the first time. Because yeah, we didn't see any Gurney Coil last time. So uh, that still is an option. But let's get rid of the Hermit. We do have a pretty good starting hand because we get on Aeromance. We can get Melusine out from that. And that basically looks like a very good cycle to go with. But yeah, if we look at our deck, most of our gold cards are still in here. So not the most ideal play. But we'll deal with it how well, uh, well the best that we can. Because uh, we have another choice here, do we? We do get Offering of this, offering to the Sea, because that means uh, we can get rid of one of those smaller units. So in Drago Larva, they're going to start putting down the Tribe. And of course, it's going to be they're going to be using this to probably get Gurney Koya in hand. Let's get the Drakkar down, then the Hermit, and then Melusine. On Aeromancy, into Melusine, in between these two guys. And we have our cycle. So unless we get Karatid, this should be going on for quite some time. Because remember, that power on Melusine will stay on the card. And we get another Ganki on there, so that's 9-9. Nine, nine. If only I had an Igni in hand. That would have been really nice. Um, so, uh, Melusine is only damaged by 1 right now. But we want to damage her a little bit further, so let's just put some rain over there. And then use the Hafru Singer to heal up to eight again and we get a nice loop going over there as well and we start getting more bloodthirst on the other side of the field so um benefits all around um i could put tears of siren down but that's gonna be useless at the moment so i think i'm just gonna um hmm. there's only an aeromancy in my deck uh, in my graveyard playing gadaneath now would be a total waste of um everything tears of siren as well um, so yeah, I think Murdroam is basically my only option here. So let's just damage the boat. It's going to be boosting itself by two as well, and then putting some more rain over there. There we go. They're probably going for She Who Knows now. We get the Beast instead. Okay, also on the same row, so that's giving them four points every single turn. Adding more rain isn't really going to help here, is it? I could get a heal off with the Tears of Siren. Um, there's still nothing in our graveyard that we can really use. And I don't want to waste the defender right now, just in case our opponent has something uh, juicier there. So, offering to the sea could actually do something. But it's not going to be that much. And I want to keep it for the next round. So yeah, there's really no card that I can really play here. Um, so I'm just going to pass. So Malacene is up to after this next bit, 215. So 15 is not bad. We can definitely resurrect her at 15 as early as possible and hope that our opponent doesn't have a Karate Heatwave because uh, that would still hurt. Okay, so we get on Aeromancy, which could get us Sigrivas right. I think I'm going to just get rid of the Tears of Siren. Um, yeah, and the Bear Witch Recap, I really don't need that. We get another Havru Singer. Is our opponent going to push? That is the big question. They are. They are going to push. I mean, I could use uh, on Neromancy to get Melusine out again. I think that would be a bit of a waste. So let's just put down Gadoneath. Because if Gadoneath now gets Koralti Heatwaved, then we can definitely still use Melusine. And we get a Defender over there. 
Um, that's not gonna help, because if they use um, Garanti, I'm gonna use the Offering to the Sea, because that's basically my go-to play for it. Um, yeah, let's put this Fallblood Priest down, that's another Druid, so we're gonna get more crows on the board. And still get the upper hand as well, which is important in this case. So now we get Koshche. Huh. So it's a Koshche deck. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Let's use Onayamancy to use Sigdifa's right to then play Melusine again. Because I want to keep fighting against that um, Koshche over there. We get Vigern, which is definitely going to trigger some Tribe. Um, I can't deal damage to that, so that's not going to really be good. But I can definitely put down the Covenant of Steel over here to protect us a little bit. I'm going to start putting down Rain as well. Because I want to have that armor removed for when we play Offering to the Sea. We got Mamuna. Mamuna is going to probably play the Witch Apprentice, right? Yeah, so that was a Witch Apprentice in the deck. Um, then we're gonna play the Hafru Singer. Yeah, I don't want to actually resurrect. Hmm. The Swablo Priest also counts as a cultist. So I'm gonna try and loop it this way. So heal up Malacene back to full. And then the Murdroam on the Covenant of Steel. But then, of course, that heals the Crow Clan Preacher. Okay, so we don't get any extra rain, which is the most annoying part. Fine, I still have an option for that. Should have done this way sooner, but um, it is what it is. And we're going to pass from our opponent. How much points do I need? So our opponent gets two points every turn, but that's it, right? So I need to play nine points. Um, and I don't really have any benefit from damaging myself here. So Freya's Blessing. Onto the... Yeah, the Hafru Singer is going to be better. Um, the Hafru Singer, and then heal up the Crow Clan Preacher, and that's going to give them another boost. Okay. Uh, and that's it, I think. We're just above them, so there we go. We get extra points on top of that. So now, are we going to manage to resurrect Melusine again? I would need basically a perfect hand for that. We get Vedermaker. This is not going to be good. This is definitely not going to be good. So the Aqua Turtle is not that bad. But yeah, Champion's Charge. Offering to the Sea is really good. Uh, we don't have any way of spawning rain at the moment. So I think Vader Make is going to be useless. Uh, yeah, okay. Vader Make is going to be useless. So Draco Turtle is actually not bad. But we're going to have to be careful with what our opponent is going to do. Um, we don't have the Scepter of Storms, we don't have any way of dealing rain, I think, because I didn't even use the rain card, yeah. Yeah, so we won't, we will, we will only get one for provision card here, so let's just play Vader Maker now. No use to uh, delay that any longer. That is actually good, because um, I can take that out, and that's basically seven down for what I want to do. So yeah, Delirium, we get that out of the way. Like, Destroys itself because its armor is gone. Now we're gonna have to play Draco Turtle next. We get a move from the Bruiser. And the Draco Turtle goes up next. I'm gonna let him generate some armor. Because if he's gonna get destroyed, I might as well wait it out. Okay. So nothing is damaged just yet. I could use Bride of the Sea for Murdroam of Crozai Rizom, or Crozai Rizom, but that's not going to help, so... Bride of the Sea into a Murdroam on the Draco Turtle, so that's a huge one. But I feel like our opponent will still have something to destroy that card, right? We get Bloody Mistress now. That is actually good. They will not get... Yeah, they will not get the most out of that card. So yeah, I'm just going to have to go for it. There's not really an alternative here, so I'm just going to do this. Uh, and then use... Murdroam, or the ability, and that's also going to heal the uh, Bride of the Sea back to full, so... It's a lot of points, but one Urden could take all of that out. One Urden and I'm dead. 
one destruction card and I'm, I'm dead, so... Depends on what our opponent has. And it doesn't seem like they have anything, or was that a lot of cards for them to watch me do? I mean, this could just be over in one fell swoop. An Urden doesn't actually win them the game. A, a destruction card like Karate or anything will win them the game. And they're roping out, so I'm guessing they don't have an answer to this? That's a 30 point Draco Turtle, by the way. Please? Oh man, they're just gonna... Are they just gonna leave it at that? Yeah, are they just gonna rope out completely? And then slam something? No? I think they left. Yeah, they, they, they definitely left. <laughs> I think he, that was a literal rage quit. They just left the table. Okay, the turn. There we go. Ooh, that was close. So there we go, those matches should be enough to show you the power of this deck. Because I really like Melusine, but the Draco Turtle is necessary to have just a backup. As you saw in that last match, the Draco Turtle is just a very good replacement for when you uh, don't have Melusine anymore. But if you manage to get Melusine through three rounds, it's a bit harder with this leader ability. Uh, but if you want to do this consistently, you could also remove Battle Trance and swap that out for Rage of the Sea. Because Rage of the Sea gives you two guarantee uh, plays of two turns of um, rain so that gives you a guaranteed bride of the sea that could resurrect Sigtrifas right again the only thing that's one provision less so you would have to swap out like for example the um, uh, what would be a good choice here um, yeah, you could swap out the Scepter of Storms and Vader Maker for something a little bit lower because of course those aren't really necessary then anymore because these are in the deck just to allow for that combo even with Battle Trance. But Battle Trance is really good um, just because you get the Murder Room on the Draco Turtle so that's 12 points if you, as you just saw, and then every single Alchemy card is another point. So it's just uh, better than Rage of the Sea to my mind. Um, but it still works with uh, Rage of the Sea as well. Um, so yeah, I think in that first that matchup I lost against Lippy. If I played Melusine a bit sooner, uh, later, I would have been able to uh, come out on top of because she would have been able to survive that skill of corruption. Um, but other than that, it's just based on the matchup. Sometimes you want to play her early if you know there's not really a way that your opponent can take it out. Um, but against Nilfgaard, I wouldn't advise uh, that. But any other um, deck, you could risk it to play Melusine early, just because the fact that you have Draco Turtle as a backup. Otherwise, you saw the main cycle, so Armored Trakar and a Hermit right next to that, or a Svalblood Priest, just to have that tick up. And then, especially with the Hermit, which will always heal itself at the end of the turn, the Hoffru Singer is a very good engine card as well. So, uh, yeah, that is the Salty Sacrifice deck. And that's it for the episode of Gwentech of today of the Salty Sacrifice deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any tips for to, well, to improve this deck, just let me know because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. And uh, yeah, just let me know what you think about it in general, if you like this deck or not. Because um, yeah, I'm always open to constructive feedback. So thank you guys enormously for watching uh, this episode of Gwentech and I hope to see you in the next episode. Because uh, yeah, we're going to be doing more deck guides this month. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Goodbye. Stay nutty.